Last week, I talked about the simple version of ClickUp recurring tasks. Now, today, we are deep diving into what's called legacy recurring tasks in ClickUp, which have a ton of settings and a whole bunch of room for confusion and anger and stuff not working how we think it should be working. So come join me today for recurring tasks, getting your head into the game and how they work and what you need to do to make them work like you want them to work. Hi everybody, I'm Yvonne with AskEvie.com and I am a business efficiency consultant for digital entrepreneurs. And if you are ready to automate your business to skyrocket your sales, then it's your turn to make sure you are subscribed and you hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, as I mentioned in last week's video, and if you haven't watched that one yet, go back, start at the simple recurring tasks and then come back here because we are building up on that video. Now, in last week's recurring tasks, I was talking about how much there is possible in ClickUp and how much it can help you really automate your business and stop having to spend so much time every week assigning tasks and doing things and building new tasks and doing all the things. Let's stop that. I know recurring tasks can be quite confusing and there's a lot of stuff in there. I will give you some shortcuts that will allow you to get faster to your goal and understand what's gonna be happening when setting up a recurring task. So without wasting more of your time, let's jump over to my ClickUp and I'll show you how to find your way around recurring tasks and figure out what you need to set it at to get the result you want. Now we are back at my profit first task that I was talking about last week and we'll just use that to show you around on what's happening. The first pro tip to get you started on the right foot is same as with the other one. I like to start with the due date and if you need a time for this task, also a specific due time right there. So I am starting with the task completely set up with the due date, with the due time and all of the information that's in there. That way the setup is going to be just a little bit easier. And then going in there, we are going back into recurse but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on those three dots right up there and we are going into legacy recurring. Now browsing through this and even just reading that thing down there is already like, whoa, okay. Breathe. We're gonna walk through this step by step, but always pay attention to what it says down here. It gives you a little bit more of a clear picture what's actually gonna happen in your legacy recurring task. But let's start in the beginning. Where does legacy recurring even come from and why is it there? So if you're new to ClickUp, legacy recurring used to be the standard setup to set up recurring tasks. Because it is quite intense and because it can be really confusing and not an easy way to just say, this task is due Monday through Friday, just repeat it, is why they moved that into legacy recurring and did the secondary setup for simple tasks. We still have it here, it's still possible and it is quite powerful if you know your way around. Now, let's start with the repeat schedule versus trigger. What does that even mean? If you choose repeat schedule, the task will repeats on a specific schedule. It does not matter if it's closed, done, if it moved to status, doesn't matter. It is on a specific schedule and it will be repeated. My favorite one because we know how often tasks do not get completed or marked as closed. Right? The repeat trigger, on the other hand, is triggered by a status change, meaning the task gets marked closed or done, then that triggers the repeat schedule. So my recommendation, just go by repeat schedule because it just doesn't look at any status or anything and it just sets that repeat schedule. Period. Underneath there, we have every day, every other day, every week, every month, every year. This is where it comes into play of, are we just talking Monday through Friday? Are we talking Tuesdays and Thursdays? Are we talking, which days of the week are we talking? So if you repeat every day and you say, okay, but not Saturday and Sunday, just every weekday, 
or we don't want it on Monday, we don't want it on Wednesday, we don't want it on Friday, we just want it Tuesday and Thursday. That's where you set this up. Also in the week, this stays the same, same kind of schedule, no matter if you repeat it every day or every week, you still have the same schedule to choose from. If we go to every month, this changes a little bit. There's the question, is your due date based on a date or based on the day of the week? So on the date, and this is what I also used in my last video, where my profit first allocations happens on the 10th and the 25th. So I need to set up two tasks for that, one to repeat on the 10th, one to repeat on the 25th. There is no way around this right now. You cannot choose multiple dates in the month. So that needs to be two dates. Or is it by week? Meaning Meaning the first week of the month, the second week of the month, the third week of the month, the fourth week of the month, the last week of the month, and then which days in that week does it repeat? We also got year, which then is specifically one day of the year. Great to remember your client's birthdays. On a specific time, I stay away from this one because that time right there is your repeat schedule. This is not a due date, this is when your repeat is happening, which you need in advanced options when the due date is hours after the repeat schedule happens. And don't ask me when the repeat schedule is happening, it should be happening at the same time you set up the task. And this is exactly the reason why I don't fuss with this. Most of my due dates are just based on a due date, not on a specific time. So I don't even deal with the specific time. But what I also do is I go by due date and I simply just set it to the next occurrence. There we go, done. But let's go back and keep going into the regular legacy recurring settings before we deep dive deeper into the advanced settings. Now, right here is the when does this end? Usually it's never. Does it end after a specific amount of time? So you just want to run it for three months and it's a monthly task, which means after three times you're going to finish it or on a specific day client reminders, you know, the client is going to be around for three months and you just set it to a specific day to end when you know the client is going to move on to the next program. What is the action that's going to happen? And I talked about this also in the last video. Are we simply just changing the due date or are we building a new task? Let's talk about the action trigger. I just want to repeat that. I talked about that in the last video, but I want to make sure you're really clear on this one. There is two ways that the repeat can happen. It either way keeps the same task and just changes the due date in the task or it duplicates it and builds a new task. So you are adding these up. You choose this right here. Change the due date, meaning the same task stays and we just change the due date or do we create a new task? I personally prefer the create a new task because there's often additional documents that get added, comments and all of those things. You just need to make sure what are we copying from this task? If we copy everything, you are all good. If we want to skip comments that are happening or any attachments that got added, choose right in here what is going to get copied over into the new task. The other one you need to pay attention to is from this task or the last task. So we are not setting the due date. Yes, we are actually setting the due date to the next occurrence. So it runs, sets the due date, done, perfect. Setting the status to to do. If you are running a reoccurrence and you are running into the issue that it gets set into closed or complete or anything and you don't see the task where it should be, this is where you find this and this is where you choose which status the new task is going to be in. What are we copying in this task? Are we copying the first ever task you set up or the one right before the one we are building? So if you were 15 tasks down the road and you change the workflow in that task, it will take the last version of the task you had rather than going to the virgin version of the first ever version of this task you set up. That's where you choose it right here. This is also where you would set to only reoccur if it's complete. I don't like to do that because we know how many tasks never get marked complete and go into the backlog and we want to keep that whole system rolling. If for whatever reason you only want to reoccur the task when it's been marked complete, you need 
need to choose this puppy right here. The secondary to this is, do we want to reoccur this the moment it gets marked closed? Or do you want to wait till the schedule says we should reoccur it? Another pro tip is look at the option, skip missed events. Now, what does that mean? And by the way, those little question marks always help you figure things out a little bit more. So when this is checked, if an event is missed because you didn't change the status in time, we'll skip that event. That means only events in the future are possible. Again, I don't like to change the due date either way. So do you wanna just skip missed events? Why not? Your choice. And again, always go back and read everything down here to know what exactly this means. Little tip, I like to go with the last task with most of my tasks because workflows grow and advance and I don't wanna to have to go in and resave the template and do and blah and all of that. So using the last task, makes sure everything is always updated to the workflow you upgraded to. And little shortcut for you, you always can click on the red down here that allows you to fast change those specific pieces of information for your recurring task. We're copying this task, it goes right there and you can save the newest task. We'll then go back, you don't even have to go back. With the status to do, it jumps you right there. I'm like, yeah, no, complete, no to do is fine. It sets the due date to the next reoccurrence, so there it is, set to current occurrence, Okay, next occurrence, hours after, those dates are based on when the reoccurrence happens, so I usually stay away from that. Or you don't set a due date at all. And starts on June 2020, June 18th, June 23rd. It gives you already the schedule you have set, and you can say, no, I don't want to start on the 16th, I want to start on the 18th. Cool, and then you just start your reoccurrence and done. I know legacy recurrence in ClickUp is quite a learning curve. So if you are running still into issues where you are trying to set certain recurring settings and it's just not working how you want it to work, don't hesitate. Jump in the comment section, let me know the use case you are trying to solve and I will jump in and help you get that set up to really help you get your head wrapped around those recurring legacy settings in ClickUp because again, they are really, really powerful, but there's so many moving pieces in there that need to be set up that it can be quite overwhelming. If you have made it this far and you are still not subscribed, now is your turn. Seriously, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. And if you wanna see more content like this, give me a thumbs up so I know to talk more about it.